Apple just released iOS 26.2, and it's a pretty sizable update. Here is everything you need to know as you update. Real quick, before I get into the update itself, if you want to keep up to date with all the latest Apple news and reviews, hit that subscribe button. So iOS 26.2 is the second major release to iOS 26 and comes roughly a week after the release candidate of iOS 26.2 was ceded to developers. This update contains a number of bug fixes, security updates, and new features and changes that we're going to talk about. So uh, yeah, with that out of the way, let's go ahead and jump into this update. So here we are. I have iOS 26.2 installed on my iPhone 17 Pro. Let's go ahead and take a look at it. Starting off with the health app and the sleep score. So you can see here, here's my sleep score from last night. I tap on this little widget, it's gonna jump me into the health app where I can see more information. With iOS 26.2, Apple made it harder to get a better sleep score. They increased the thresholds for the higher scores. So now very low runs zero to 40 points, whereas before it was zero to 29. So it's a little bit easier to get very low low is 61 to 60, okay 61 to 80, high is 81 to 95, and very high, which used to be called excellent, now requires a 96 to 100 to get. So before, uh, it was easier to get that high score. Now if you want to get very high instead of, you know, the old excellent, you have to have like a 96 to 100 sleep score, which takes into consideration your duration, the bedtime, and how many times you woke up. So it calculates all those together to give you that cumulative sleep score and track it over time. It's just harder to get the higher scores now, which to me makes sense. I kept getting high as my sleep score uh, or excellent, and I definitely should not have. I was definitely not getting enough sleep. So I like these new metrics a bit better. They are definitely more accurate. If we go over to podcast, which, you know, quick plug for HomeKit Insider, my podcast where I talk about everything to do with this smart home, be sure to check that out. Um, but now, Apple Apple has added a few updates for it. So first, it'll automatically create chapter markers for podcasts that do not have chapters. So mine, I actually do put chapters into HomeKit Insider, but for podcasts that don't, it'll use AI to automatically create these chapters. Additionally, Apple has given a new improvement for shout outs. So if you mention someone or anything, you can put those links in here into the player and into the actual, um, the notes. And at the bottom of it, you can see we have from this episode, which should be able to pull out links from a show and highlight them in a better format. This is still new, so I'm curious how this is gonna change. Like obviously I have all of these links here, like for what I talk about, in the show. So I don't know how to get those links to kind of show up in this from this episode format. So we'll have to see if there's any changes that need to happen for those to start pooling or maybe it'll just get better over time. But we'll see. But there are a few new changes here to podcasts. Apple News is getting a much needed redesign. Now, nothing major, but they are changing the layout to make it a lot easier to get around. So first, you have all these new pills here at the top to go between different categories. Specifically, we have one for like sports, all the Apple puzzles. I mean, even the food one, which used to be buried here at the end, now it is all baked here into these little pills at the top to help it help you get to those categories much more easily. The ones at the bottom have been adjusted, so what used to be this last one here became a dedicated search button, which is great, and then what used to be there is now under following, so you can still get to it there like you used to before. So then we have today, news, audio, following, and search. So definite improvement with that. I like doing like how they change it, especially adding that dedicated search button. Makes it a lot easier and makes it a lot easier to get to food and your saved recipes, which I think is really crucial. On the lock screen, Apple is expanding the control of liquid glass. So if I go in here and I customize my lock screen and I choose my number here at the top, there is a new slider. So we have options for glass or solid numbers. And then if you want the, um, the liquid glass, you can adjust the thickness and how much liquid glass effect there is. So you can go more opaque or very, very clear, very liquid glass, kind of like it more towards around there. But yeah, you have a few different options here for customizing the look of the liquid glass effect on the lock screen. Inside of the music app, Apple is adding support for offline lyrics. So this kind of like sing-along view, lyrics view, this can now be saved. So if you're saving these songs, the lyrics can be saved offline as well. So if you save these, you're on a plane, you wonder what the lyrics are, you can now see them and not having to wait until you actually have cellular connection to make them work. Around the holidays, there is no shortage of deals from tons of brands on everything from computers to headphones. 
I wanna make sure I take a moment to highlight one such brand, my sponsor, ESR, who has been my go-to for recommended accessories. This includes the classic hybrid case. It includes full coverage for the camera plateau with a zinc alloy metal ring for added protection. This isn't just for protection though. It opens up to become the stash stand, one of my favorite features ever added to a phone case. You always have a built-in stand that works in multiple orientations while leaving the bag free for various MagSafe accessories. I've also still been rocking the ESR Armorite Pro screen protector since the last time they did a sponsor video with me. It is insanely easy to install within literal seconds with perfect alignment and no dust. They're also made from Corning Accessory Glass, which is the same company that makes the actual iPhone display glass. ESR has some fantastic deals going on through the end of the year. From November 20th to December 1st of 2025, you can enjoy up to 30% off ESR products, and you can get an extra discount using the code down below, active November 20th to December 31st. Find all the details and discounts listed in the description and pinned in the comments. A quick change in the games app. First, there is a new splash screen, which I did not capture, unfortunately. Um, but if we go over to library and now we can sort here, you can actually see there's a new option for size. So you can change in sorting how these by size. So Hitman World of Assassination is here at the top of the list. Um, Assassin's Creed is 10.2 and it goes down from there. But you can choose like, you know, recent games, name, anything like that. Um, but size is a new option to filter by here in the Apple Games app. Passwords has a new option for marking websites as not to track passwords in. That way it makes it easier. So if you have a website you frequently go to that you don't want to save a password on, that can now be tracked in the Passwords app and broken out into its own section so you can manage those websites specifically. Here in Reminders, you can see we have Urgent Reminders. Basically, when you toggle on this Urgent Toggle for a reminder, it'll give you an alarm at the same time. So instead of just giving you an alert, a notification, it'll actually set an alarm to go off like a regular alarm would. You can then snooze it just like an alarm and it'll pop it up, put you live activity, all that stuff to make it easy to get back to those reminders. You can see here when creating a new reminder, I have an option for urgent, toggle that on. It'll make me put a date and time and then it's gonna give me that alarm when that happens. Inside of the Measure app, Apple has added liquid glass. You can see we have just the liquid glass effects here. They look really, really cool. It applies both to the level one as well as measure, though the level has the cooler one. I mean, that looks like an actual bubble. And Apple went through a few iterations of this during the beta process, and I think they ended up with a very good uh, visual look for the level app with iOS 26.2. If you go into settings, then general, and then go down to airdrop, we have a new option here at the bottom for manage known airdrop contacts. You can share a code to somebody that are not in your contacts and it'll allow them to be visible with airdrop for up to 30 days. So this new pairing option will give you a code, they can put it in and it'll pair you guys for 30 days to be able to airdrop devices or uh, content to one another without having to be in each other contacts. Inside of CarPlay, you can now turn off the pin conversations if you do not want to see those. Inside of Freeform, they are adding tables. You can organize your content, attach objects, super flexible layouts, and style the table, but tables are new in the Freeform app with iOS 26.2, as well as iPadOS 26.2 and macOS 26.2. With 26.2, now when you have a time or a date, so maybe online or here in a message or an email, and you long press it, you can actually go and have invites. So if I tap on invites, it's gonna launch me into the invites app. So this is a new deep link for the Apple invites, and then you can add all this information, but it makes it easy to automatically create that just based on a little bit of information. If we head back into settings, I'm gonna scroll down and go to accessibility. I'm then gonna scroll down again and go to audio and visual. From here, if we scroll to the bottom, there's a new option for flash for alerts. When you turn this on, you can actually have it flash the screen. Before you could do the flashlight, now you can do the screen so it'll flash at you when you have a notification or an alert coming in and you can choose to have it happen in silent mode and while it is unlocked. Still within settings, if I scroll down this time and go into notifications, we have new options for some safety alerts. 
These are all the way here at the bottom. So enhanced safety alerts. We have new ones for earthquake alerts and imminent threats. So these are two different types of alerts that can come through kind of like Amber Alerts and other ones that may show on your phone. Now we have these new enhanced safety alerts for earthquake and imminent threats. Also worth noting, iOS 26.2, I believe is removing Wi-Fi sync for Apple Watch for users in the EU. This is again due to that, uh, that whole sweeping legislation in the EU and Apple is pooling Wi-Fi sync because they'd be forced to bring it to other wearables, which would open up security compromises that Apple does not want to make. So unfortunately, that feature is being removed for the EU users. The good news is though, they are getting one new feature. Live translation is on AirPods in the EU with 26.2 which is a new feature for AirPods Pro as well as AirPods 4. I also want to mention that how during the beta process, we saw a few different code references. One was to something called the Apple Creator Studio. This is hypothesized to be some sort of new subscription program for creators maybe gaining access to tools like Final Cut Pro or even the Apple-owned Pixelmator software. We'll have to see, because as of now, nothing has been made official. Then in the home app, there are little code snippets that says is first party. And this is referencing different smart home accessories. The idea would be here is that Apple could be creating more of their own smart home accessories. We already have references for like is HomePod, is Apple TV, but is first party would encompass other accessories. It's rumored that Apple is working on its own security cameras or video doorbell, and this could be the early groundwork for the expansion into that smart home category for Apple. So that is what is new in iOS 26.2. A pretty good update if you ask me for, you know, here in December. Apple will likely be seeding a new round of betas for iOS 26.3, though the .3 updates historically are exceptionally minor usually just bug fixes, security improvements, stability updates, things like that, be a shorter beta cycle to come out beginning of 2026. So don't expect too much there. The big update that I know a lot of people are gonna be waiting on will be 26.4, which is right now scheduled to launch in the spring, probably around March, and that could contain a bunch of new features, especially for the smart home and Apple's new version of Siri. So stay tuned to the channel for that, and I will bring you all the updates as they happen. If you spot anything else new in iOS 26.2, let me know down below in the comments and we'll update the article on appleinsider.com and credit you if you find anything new. Otherwise, make sure you subscribe and follow and I'll see you all in the next video.